Our species tonight is the Pagata Blue. Oh, no, not another Buckley Blue. Um, but uh, uh, you, you probably remember that we have two groups of buckwheat blues. These are the little blues that feed on, on the buckwheat plants. Uh, and uh, one is called the, the dotted blue group and the other is called the square spotted blue group. And we've talked quite a bit in the past about the square spotted blue group. The dotted blue group has two species in Washington. <clears throat> there's there's the, uh, the old name is the dotted blue. That's what the group is named after. It's, it turned out to be a, a group of species instead of just one. Uh, but there is actually a dotted blue. Anybody know what the, the letters SS stand for? Sub subspecies? Hmm? Subspecies? Mm -mm. Yes, it's Latin. Sensu stricto. And that means? In the strict sense. In the strict sense. Oh. So this is not just the Euphelodes and Apis group. This is the dotted blue. <clears throat> and uh, we have one population that we know of in the state. This is a population that that uh, Bob Pyle found, it's up by Rimrock Lake in western Yakima County. Uh, and the reason it's so restricted is, as far as we know in Washington at this point, there's only one host plant that it feeds on, and that's, uh, that's the bare stem desert buckwheat or Eriogonum nudum, and that's only, well, it's one of the only places where the plant grows. Uh, this is a photograph that's uh, from the uh, uh, Butterflies of America website, because I don't have a lot of good pictures of the species. Uh, the dotted blue group, all of uh, the species that are in the dotted blue group tend to have small round spots. And the ones in the square spotted blue group, the bat group, have square blocky spots, especially on the foreleg. <clears throat> but they also, uh, they also have, if you take a male and uh, dissect the genitalia, they have very different genitalia. So they're clearly different species groups. And this is what the eggs of well, all of the Euphelodes look like. They're very small eggs, only six tenths of a millimeter. And they tend to have this, it's not real clear in this picture, but they tend to have this swirly look like they've been twisted at the top. And uh, the entry hole where the, where the sperm goes in, it, it tends to be squarish. And so this, these eggs are not really uh, too similar to other uh, eggs of blues, coppers, or hair streaks to which they're most closely related. Here's the little first instar harvest. And this is only one millimeter, just a hair over one millimeter long. So if you lined 25 of these up end to end, they would add up to an inch. So they're very small larvae when they first hatch. Dave, is it really that color, that yellow and the blue? It's something that they Yeah, yeah they, uh, they are this color. And the head tends to be this kind of a purplish color fading down to solid black at the, at the actual head. And uh, in the first instar like this with most larvae, the, the, uh, the hairs or setae look proportionally very long. And uh, they don't really get shorter as the larva grows, but the larva grows into them, and so they look shorter in subsequent instars. And here's the next instar, second instar. <coughs> and you recall that instars are, are the uh, uh, body forms uh, that exist before and after molts, just like crabs. They molt periodically, and each time they molt, the, uh, the characters of the larvae change. You can see this one's uh, starting to, to develop some uh, a red streak down the back and, and so forth. There's the third instar, and it changes quite a bit. The third instar develops all these neat black spots, some red spots. And notice that the CP are very restricted, uh, all are just pretty much around the periphery of the larva, and that's very typical of all of the uh, all the buckwheat blues, the square spotted and dotted. And here's the next instar, fourth instar. They only have four instars, uh, but this is an early fourth instar. And then just before they're ready to pupate, they develop some very bright colors, or they usually do anyway. Notice the colors uh, on this larvae, but notice how closely they match the colors on the buckwheat that they're feeding on. <clears throat> they sequester these, these pigments in, and then the pigments show up in the bodies. Sometimes you'll get uh, some of these species, not this one, but other species that feed uh, on leaves uh, instead of on the, on the, uh, uh, on the flowers, which, which have the pigment. And they won't have these, these red colors. They'll, they'll be very pale. There's a pupa looks like very typical, of pretty much all the lichenids. And here again, this is, this is actually one of our uh, dotted blues. This is from Rimrock Lake. And, you can see it's a rather warm one. I don't 
we really are very lacking on, on photographs of, of, uh, of dotted blues uh, or anoptes here in this state. But, but again, you can see that it has the small spots uh, and uh, both, both members of the anoptes group, the orange spots tend to be separated separated and kind of V or chevron shaped and they're not welded together into a band. <coughs> that, that would be a character of the other group, the square spotted group. group. This is from Butterfly's American webpage and this is a this is a uh, an adult male. <coughs> Here's the kind of habitat where the host plant grows and, and this is on the south fork of the uh, Teotin, south, south fork of the Teotin River, uh, south of uh, uh, Rimrock Lake, and this this bank right here is, is where the plant grows. These are the plants. You can hardly see them because they they kind of blend in. <clears throat> and looking closer, you see that they're very open plants, uh, very openly branched, and the flowers are small. And these little leaves down at the bottom, those basal leaves are all the leaves that they have. But the butterflies don't feed on the leaves; they feed on uh, they feed on the flowers. Here's what the leaves look like. But these senesce early in the year. You can see something has been feeding on the leaves, but uh, we don't think it's the uh, dotted blues. Could be the uh, It could be. It could be the aquanoids, which are also found in the same area, the aquan blues. Now, uh, these are the females, again, from Butterflies of America. These are Andy Warren's photographs. Uh, now these are the females of, of both species, the anoptes, which is the dotted blue, and the, uh, the other member of this closely related group, the Columbia blue. Uh, both of them are in the dotted blue group. And uh, here's a bunch of uh, ways that the two species are different. I'm just going to go on and then come back. These are the males, uh, same sort of a layout. So let's go back and try to figure out how we tell these two things apart. Because, uh, they, they do look pretty similar. Uh, and uh, again, this is taken from Andy Warren's descriptions of the butterflies of uh, Oregon book. And he starts off with anoptes, the dotted blue, um, are darker blue above, while the Columbia, Columbia, you recall, is our very common species that grows out in the shrub steppe, and anoptes is in somewhat more long cane. And uh, anoptes, the dotted blue, the, the males are darker blue, and the uh, and Columbia, the the males are more lustrous blue. And here we see what they're talking about. Here's the darker blue anoptes, and here's the more lustrous blue Columbia blue. So that's, that's what he's looking at there. Next one is uh, with anoptes, the dotted blue, the males have a broad, dark margin on the wings, on the, on the upper surface. And in the other species, Columbia, the males have a narrow, dark margin. Here again. Here's the dotted blue with a broad black border, and here's Columbia blue with a considerably more narrow black border. Ventral spots are small and poorly developed in Anoptes, and they're somewhat more bold in Columbia. Columbia, and this, this is true of both sexes. Here's the males, and again, you can see here in the dotted blue, the Anoptes, the spots are small and poorly developed. And in the Columbia blue, they're, they're, they're somewhat more bold. And if we back off and look at the females, uh, we see the same thing. Here's an optis with the pretty much small spots. And, and with Columbia blue, they're, they're bolder, especially in the, in the area around the, the orange aurora. OK, that, and that actually brings us to the next uh, character, the, the orange hind wing aurora. Uh, in, in Anoptes, they, they went up in the uh, uh, up by Rimrock Lake, the, the ori, the, the hind wing orange band is pretty subdued, uh, while, it's, while in Columbia it's quite a bit older. And here again, uh, here's Anoptes, look at the subdued orange band, and then Columbia blue, it's quite a bit older. That's true on the underside too. Anoptes has a, a pretty limited band, and then Columbia is quite a bit heavier. And then uh, the next one we can't tell from these photographs, but the Anoptes is, is somewhat smaller than the Columbia blue. Uh, now the next one is one I have trouble with. John, maybe you can help us with this, but uh, Andy points out that in Anoptes, the, the wing outline is, is rounded, more rounded 
And in Columbia Blue, the wing outline is more angular. Well, let's look at the males. Uh, so this one, this one is supposed to be more angular, and this one's supposed to be more rounded. I, I don't see that too well. Yeah, I don't either. Not, those Not in this particular set of them. So that you told me the end you did this. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the uh, female with the same thing. And maybe it looks a little it's rounded. A little, more, it's a little more rounded. Yeah, but they're, they're pretty similar. So I have trouble with that particular feature. So often wing shape is a product of uh, upbringing. I mean, if you have a luxuriant food plant and you feed really well, then you'll have maybe a more well-developed wing. And I think those wing characters are sometimes pretty sketchy. Okay, okay. Uh, the last one is a host plant differences. As far as we know, an Alpeast uses only one host in Washington. That's the bear stem buckwheat area I'm going to The Columbia blue uses two primary plants uh, compositum, which is uh, the northern buckwheat, elatum, which is the tall buckwheat, and sometimes strictum is the buckwheat. Uh, now, uh, um, in Oregon, they do report that Anoptes also uses uh, elatum, the tall buckwheat. So uh, we need to we need to kind of keep our eyes open in Washington to see if we might possibly find more populations of Anoptes. But right now, this is all we have. And if you see these things in the field, please try to get some pictures. Because you see, as you can see, my pictures are not very sterling. These are all Andy Warren's pictures. <laughs> and that's all I have. Any questions? Uh, Rob? Yeah, it seems to me that, uh, <clears throat> except for the food plant, every one of those differences is uh, uh, just an average kind of a difference <laughs> that uh, could be in, in some specimens uh, 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 completely swamped by individual variation. Uh, so who proved that these are different species? Did they do DNA or what? Well, actually, uh, to answer the question, you're absolutely right. Almost anything that you measure, uh, if it's subject to variability, any distinctiveness can be swamped by that. You know, bimodality then will get swamped uh, by extreme variability. But uh, in this particular case, yeah, molecular work has been done between these two, and they are um, segregable. I mean, there's there are haplotypes that aren't shared. But I, I think that you know these are really tough, and most of the uh, evidence that people have is actually in the field evidence in observing these things and seeing their close association. For instance, in the Anoptes, this association with Eriogonum nudum in California and Oregon is so extensive, so widespread, it crosses over all other species. Euphelodes, that that itself is uh, you know, significant, the fact that it's maintained here. <clears throat> I think the uh, actual phenotype, I mean, the problem with butterflies is that they're just flying billboards, okay? And uh, we flying see what? billboards. Billboards, okay. <laughs> yeah, they see, you know, what we see is what they're telling us, okay? Oh, okay. Well, uh, let me remind you of something. You know, Monarch Viceroy, they lie to us all the time. Mm -hmm. Caligo owl butterflies, they lie to us all the time. You know, any of the, the, the crypsis, any of the patterns that, um, you know, enable butterflies to hide out from us are deception on the wing. So, you know, people that look really hard at wing uh, characters and think they see something, mostly are saying something that doesn't exist. I mean, they're, they're rarely, I mean, I'm going to go into coleus and probably undermining my own presentation, but. But, <laughs> but, but with any species, uh, you're, you're, you're always looking for a combination of characters. And it, you, as you say, any one of these characters can, can be uh, blurred out or even lacking in, in, uh, in an individual specimen. But if you look for this set of characters, you can usually, you can usually separate these things. I know that back in the late 1990s, I was collecting in Southwest Oregon. And whereas in Washington, I was able to usually distinguish between uh, species of not, or of, of, uh, of uh, I could not, for my life, distinguish down there. It was that much different down there from up here. Yeah. But, but I have a, a really ignorant question. That is, is how old is, or how long have been people been using this name Columbia for? So about uh, ten years. Okay. About that. It was two thousand five, almost ten. Years. Was Andy the first one to? Yes, sir. To raise it to the species level. Yeah. And Columbia exists as a subspecies. This is Andy Warren when he did his butterflies for you. 
it's a it's it's a book with a lot of text and no pictures, but it's a good book. All sure. the best books. Um, in Washington or any other states, do they overlap in some areas, like where the shrub step comes into the ponderosa pine? And not that we found. We really, really have one population of Anopi so far, and it's uh, it's the one around Rimrock Lake, and we have not found uh, the Columbia there. But it's not too far away. When but we're on a field trip, what do we call these two now? Dotted blue. We still call it dotted. And Columbia blue. Yeah, uh, dotted blue has always been a legitimate name, but we didn't think we had it in Washington. When they started splitting up down the blue, uh, we thought it was only further south. But, but then Bob Pyle went out. Well, that's actually been 10 years ago now. But Bob Pyle went out and, and discovered it here in Washington. So we do have dotted blue. In the, in the past, we thought we had lots of dotted blues all over the state. But now that we've learned more about this genus, we, we realized, oh, they're, they're all this Columbia blue. On the question of uh are they really different? Doesn't the genitalia difference? No, they are either. definitely different. not in these two. These are both in the same group. Okay. And so the genitalia are pretty similar. Uh, they're very different from the spore spotted blue group, uh, easily separated. But these two, I don't think you can really separate. Their food plates are different, very different, generally, mostly. As far as we know, yeah. But, Again, we just need to keep our eyes open and see if we don't start finding monopolies in other places here in Washington. We might. There are places in Oregon where both of these are St. Patrick. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of feeders and new feeders, uh, they're displaced in time, somewhat asynchronic, but they're in the same places. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dave, uh, can you tell us any of these field trips that people might go on that can see either of those? Well, we'll see Columbia blue just about everywhere. Uh, and we are having one trip late in the season up to the top of Bethel Ridge. We could see an Optis up in that area. But uh, during, the, during the year, we'll see Columbia blue in, in quite a few of these spots. And a whole lot of other good things. I think we saw a dotted blue at Reese Canyon last year. Yeah. It would be on, on the, above the springs, Garrison Springs. I have a photo of one laying eggs. Yeah. It's, it's certainly oh. not. That's a real dotted blue? You ID'd it for me. Well, it, <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 was, like, it was like one of those concessions you make to know your pleasure on a field trip. <laughs> <laughs> I might have said dotted blue group, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you.